Have you ever driven a racing car where moving your knees in a specific position or placing your elbows at a particular area makes your car go faster? We expect 99.9% .9 of people to answer no, as such a concept would sound ludicrous or even crazy. However, we will share the tale of one such innovative technology introduced in the 2010 F1 calendar that put this crazy idea into a reality. We're talking about an innovation so wild it had the F1 rulebook scrambling for a rewrite. Join us as we uncover how the McLaren F1 team introduced a concept that had been a hotbed of technological wizardry, pushing the limits of what's possible on the track, and sometimes even bending the rules like a rubber band on steroids. For decades, F1 has been a playground for the brightest minds in engineering, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the pursuit of speed, performance, and victory. Over the years, the sport has seen many technological advancements, some of which have been allowed to continue to this day, while others have been shelved forever. From the roar of the turbocharged engines to active suspension systems that would ensure less excessive change to the car's ride height, this sport has always been a leader in cutting-edge advancements. The McLaren team introduced one such cutting-edge piece of technology in the 2010 season, the f -Duck. You might wonder about the significance of the letter F in the name. Does it mean fast or force or some other secret code that no one would be able to decrypt? But before you ponder further, we can tell you that the letter F has no technological abbreviation. The official name of this piece of technology in McLaren's books is RW80. The media named it F-Duct due to its location beside the chassis inlet and the F in the Vodafone sponsor logo. The F-Duct was designed to improve aerodynamic performance and reduce drag, allowing cars to reach higher speeds on the straights. If you liked the video, don't forget to press the like button and hit the subscribe button. How does the F-Duct work? The F-Duct was a unique design that included a small snorkel air scoop at the front of the cockpit that channels air through the duct and towards the back of the car. The pressure changes in the duct in conjunction with small slots in the rear wing, causing the wing to enter a stalled state at high speeds, reducing aerodynamic drag and providing the car up to an additional 6 miles per hour, 9.7 kilometers per hour, on straightaways. To activate the effect, the driver covers up a small hole in the cockpit with their left leg. The system utilized a fluidic switch, a low flow rate airstream from the cockpit switched a much higher volume flow rate down from the roll hoop. When the McLaren F1 team removed the covers to their 2010 title challenger, the attention of rivals and media alike were instantly drawn to the snorkel air scoop on the front of the chassis. Everyone wondered why the team from walking had an air scoop on the front of their car, and many wondered whether it was even a legal piece of equipment. To satisfy their curiosity, drivers would look for an opportunity to have a look inside the MP425 cockpit. One example can be seen in this picture, where Red Bull's Mark Webber tried to have a glance inside McLaren's cockpit in the 2010 Chinese Grand Prix. F-Duck's Evolution in 2010 The F-Duck gave McLaren an advantage on circuits with long straights, such as spa Francorchamps, Monza, and Shanghai, where they could reach higher speeds than their rivals. The team achieved race victories in the Belgian, Canadian, and Chinese GP after scoring podiums in the Italian and Abu Dhabi GP. The system, however, wasn't effective on tight, twisty circuits where the cars required more downforce, such as Monaco, Singapore, and Hungary, and McLaren lacked pace on these circuits. Throughout the 2010 Formula One season, McLaren's F-Duct system underwent numerous modifications in pursuit of better performance. The initial design required the driver to cover the cockpit hole with their knee, but later versions allowed for elbow operation. The snorkel inlet on top of the chassis was also revised several times to improve airflow. Additionally, McLaren adapted the system to the varying downforce and drag reduction required for each circuit. In Japan, the team even overhauled the entire rear end of the car, adopting Force India's method of connecting the duct to the main plane to reduce a more significant stall effect. This necessitated moving the corresponding slot on the rear face of the wing. Red Bull's Objection Now that everyone knew what McLaren was doing, the rest of the team started formulating ideas they could implement to neutralize the threat from McLaren. The most challenging thing for McLaren's rivals would have to be copying and integrating the idea into their cars. 
This was a time-taking process, and success wouldn't be guaranteed because McLaren spent the whole of the preseason perfecting their design, and teams would find it challenging to match McLaren's development pace in improving this technology. The most straightforward approach the Red Bull F1 team, McLaren's main competition in 2010 season, took was to ask for an outright ban on the f -duct. They raised concerns with the FIA regarding the legality of the McLaren MP425's rear wing. However, the FIA did not consider this a movable aerodynamic device, which would have violated technical regulations. The car was inspected before the Bahrain Grand Prix and cleared to compete. When it became clear that McLaren had introduced a technology that could be advantageous and utterly legal at the time, other teams decided they had no other option but to try and develop their f duct technology, leading to intense competition for superiority on the racetrack. Rivals attempt to copy f duct Several teams attempted to replicate McLaren's f duct system, with Sauber being the first, followed by Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, Force India, Williams, and Renault. Each team made modifications and adjustments to the design, such as changing the location of the snorkel, using additional inlets, or relying on a hole in the cockpit that they would block with their elbows to implement their version of the F-Duct system on their cars. The ban on McLaren's F-Duct The F-Duct technology developed by McLaren was considered a clever innovation by the F1 community, but in May 2010, teams excluding McLaren voted to ban from 2011 onwards. The primary concern regarding this technology was that drivers would have to focus on plugging the hole in the cockpit by moving their body parts to activate the F-Duct system. McLaren drivers used to fill the hole by moving their knee, while Ferrari drivers would achieve the same result by placing sewn-in patches to activate the system. This was considered a significant safety issue, as teams objected that drivers would even have to let go of the steering wheel on certain occasions or drive with fingertips when using the F-Duct. Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes were among the teams expressing support for the van. The teams also cited a need for such a mechanism outside of F1. This was a valid point, as some van technologies in F1, like ABS brakes, traction control, or turbochargers, were removed from the sport because they were considered significant driver aids, which would not test the raw talent of the driver. Still, they found their way onto everyday cars. The F-Duct had no real-world applications, as a regular road-legal car wouldn't have a hole in it somewhere that the driver could plug to increase the car's speed for just a few kilometers per hour. Such a speed advantage has an edge on the F1 grid, but not on public roads. So, spending resources on such technology didn't make sense to many teams. Conclusion even after its ban from the 2011 F1 season and onward, the F-Duct left a permanent mark on the sport's technical regulations. The Drag Reduction System, or DRS for short, which still exists in the sport today, can be tentatively labeled as a successor to the F-Duct. The F-Duct was primarily used to reduce drag on the car, thereby increasing top speed on the streets. On the other hand, the DRS was introduced to increase overtaking opportunities by reducing drag and increasing the straight-line speed of the car following behind. Both systems involve altering the car's aerodynamics to increase speed. Still, the DRS is a more controlled and regulated system, as it can only be used in certain zones of the track and under specific circumstances. Formula One has seen unique and unconventional innovations that will pique your curiosity. While McLaren's F-Duct was a significant breakthrough, there's more to explore. From quirky-looking fan cars to X-shaped wings installed on the car that resemble Star Wars Starfighters, F1 has witnessed some unexpected and intriguing inventions. These innovations have left an indelible mark on the history of F1, and we're here to take you on a journey. These are the seven game-changing innovations that changed F1 history. So what are you waiting for? Click on the video right here. Until next time.